Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kawai, joined by Achara Kirk. Step, step, step. We're looking at a real Rejects video today. Every Batman project coming 2022 to 2025, confirmed and rumored. Oh. So, thank you, The Real Rejects, for allowing us to react to this. Very, very much appreciated. Y'all, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, please, bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. And also, while you're subscribing and upvoting stuff, there's a link in the description below for the video we're about to watch. If you want to click on that, give the original an upvote, and subscribe to The Real Rejects from there. All right, let's jump into ah. this. What is happening there, Cat? Hello, Cat. How Aww. you doing there, Copper? What's going on there, Reject Nation? Greg here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video with the Batman now out in cinemas. I wanted to talk today about every upcoming Batman project confirmed or rumored between 2022 to 2025. That's right. Greg heard the title of a recent Cosmic Wonder video, replaced <laughs> the word Marvel with Batman, and came up with a whole video mm. based around that. And you know what? <laughs> if you are part of the camp that subscribes to the idea that there's way too much Batman out there, well, guess what? We're getting even way more. Like, oh, some of these are rumored, and a good amount of these are confirmed. So if you can, leave a like, and let's just swing on into action, people. So first on the list is the <laughs> Batman dose. There will be no spoilers for the Batman <laughs> here today, but before before this movie even came out, Matt Reeves did say that they have been in early development on the sequel. The producer, recently talking at a red carpet event, I think it was actually the premiere, he did say that even though this one was pretty much a five year long process, that the Batman part two would take nowhere near as long to get off the ground. So you should probably so. expect the Batman two within about three years, unless that producer's just being a dick and he's gonna release it like on four years and 11 months, which would be annoying. <laughs> However, there's no details about this one yet. The studios want us to stay solely focused on the Batman Batman part one, we've heard talks about maybe they could get Joker in here, which sounds predictable and generic. As much as I want to see Joker in this universe, Matt Reeves explored the idea of trying to bring like a realistic Mr. Freeze to life, which I just think would be so much cooler. That would be cool. Wow, he's yeah. Really stage in the career of Penguin. We know he's getting a spinoff, so maybe Penguin could be the villain in it. Question goes to you guys, who would you want to be the villain of the Batman part two? Moving on. We might as well stay on topic and stay in the Matt Reeves of Bataversy thingy that's going on. What did you say? I said any. I'll take any. Oh. Yeah. I thought you said poison ivy. Oh, I'll take a sexy poison ivy. You know what would be cool? What? Is the mask of the phantasm. <laughs> so, Live mean, action? Yeah. Like that was actually an inspiration of, supposedly for the Batman film by Matt Reeves. I mean, there was obviously several, a multitude, a plethora, a litany, if you will. <laughs> of inspirations for the Batman. Mask of the Phantasm was definitely on that list. And so that would be cool. I have either two or three shows confirmed, maybe another one here. The reason I say that number is because there was something that came out recently that Matt Reeves said, where he did say, we're doing another series that connects to Arkham Asylum. I didn't know what that might mean because in the way how this is phrased, okay, well, we have two confirmed shows right now. Another rumored show, would this Arkham Asylum thing be connected to one of the shows? Or or would it be its own separate entity? Regardless, to explore more of Arkham Asylum yeah. inside of the world Matt Reeves has helped create would be awesome. This would be something that feels probably more unsettling, grim, you know, realistic, what you've seen in the Batman trailers, if you haven't seen the Batman movie. You only get like a taste of it in the Batman film, but you do get an idea of like, I would hate to walk through the halls of this place. Which yeah. I think would be a fantastic show. <laughs> Maybe you can actually get Dr. Hugo Strange involved. Ooh. But if they're not doing just like an Arkham Asylum based show, I think the one where Arkham will make the most sense would probably be for one that was the first confirmed series, Gotham PD. I think that's just a working title right now. So it's where the okay. Batman takes place in year two of him being Batman, the plot synopsis that we have so far for this is the series is set during Batman's first year of operations and focus on corruption in Gotham City. According to various reports and a showcase of DC fandom, the series will focus on a corrupt GCPD officer and the battle for his soul. Oh, that's now, okay. Reports dramatic. That Jeffrey Wright will reprise his role as James Gordon for this series. You know, if like you've seen the Gotham show like myself that was on Fox, you might go, well, this might be exactly the same thing. When you watch the movie, it's obviously very different. And whereas the movie does take inspiration from the comic book year one, it's not like a direct adaptation of it. I think for this show, 
it could be way more of an adaptation of Batman Year One. As much as I want it to do its okay. own thing and not be reliant on a Batman appearance, I think this show would totally work with a Batman appearance. I kind of sound like Seth Rogen. <laughs> <laughs> this makes the most sense to place in Batman Year One, and in that comic book, which both Batman Begins and the Batman draw inspiration from, it's Gordon who's really the main character of that comic book. And I always thought it would be cool if they did some type of perspective shift where maybe sometimes you see Bruce Wayne and sometimes you see Batman, but the show never goes out of its way to go. They're one and the same. Just keep it locked into like the cops or Gordon's perspective. And with the movie hmm. dealing so much with corruption in the GCPD, I think this would be also a great opportunity to set up more of the crime families that are established as well. Things like the Falcone family, the Maroney family other family that aren't coming to mind right now. So <laughs> like three, four, I don't remember. Catwoman. Matt Reeves did say that there have been discussions about Zoe Kravitz having her own HBO Max show as well, or having her own spinoff series in some capacity. And this would be cool. And also with that, I want to talk about the Penguin series, which is actually confirmed. Matt Reeves even recently said, we're doing this Penguin series. And one of the great things about that is it's Colin Farrell. Yeah. Because I've never seen him. He's so incredible and he's a scene stealer. He is a he, scene he stealer. Really is. Along yeah. the way, we thought maybe we could do his character character as a series so I talked to HBO Max and showed them Colin in the movie and spoke to them about what this could be and they said let's do it wow. we'll do all your all the Batman you want Matt Reeves will do it yeah I'm excited for the series dude and I know this is a completely different thing even James Gunn taking Peacemaker turning that into an HBO Max series a character that I was like I don't really want to see a show about Peacemaker I ended up loving the hell out of it and this would be something entirely different yeah. but led by Colin Farrell and it's Penguin that would be awesome and the reason I'm sort of combining Cat Woman and Penguin, because I think the same can be said about both, maybe more for Penguin, I would say, than Catwoman. This show could do either a prequel that lead into the events of the Batman, or it could be a sequel, things that happen after the Batman. That's what a prequel and a sequel are, in case you didn't know. <laughs> or maybe they can like Better Call Solid, where you know you see the past and then you also see the future. Either way, it sounds like Penguin will be a story that will be fed in between the Batman and the Batman 2. And I'm really hoping they bring the events from Penguin into the Batman 2. I'm really, really glad that this is all playing out in Matt Reeves' favor, because if you remember when The Last Jedi dropped, there was like this excitement from Disney about, I can't remember the director's name all of a sudden, but he- J.J. Abrams? No, not J.J. No. Abrams. It was the guy in between. Oh, the guy in between. I forgot his um, name all of Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson, thank you. There was so much excitement around Ryan Johnson that Disney gave him his own trilogy for Star Wars and he started already working on it. And then the movie came out and people were mad as hell. <laughs> and they're like, just kidding. You thought that was serious? We were just messing around. No. <laughs> A trilogy, you nuts. <laughs> Crazy. Get out of here. You're don't done. Make knives out. Can you just call JJ and come in the office? Yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad this is all working out for Matt Reeves because I loved the Batman as evidenced by the videos that are on this channel. Yeah. And so to know that, you know, he was telling HBO this and that, and they're like, okay, let's do it. Well, I you think know? that Gotham City that he helped to create is just so interesting and it's so rich for mining of like more stories and more characters yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So he did a really great job there. So it just makes sense to kind of go with that and that world that he's built and be like, okay. And then the character that Colin Farrell made oh, I'm stoked. for the Penguin. Yeah, like, like, yeah, show me more of that guy. I am stoked. He yeah. was definitely a scene stealer. Yeah. yeah. All right, I, I think, I think that's it. Matt Reeves' Batman world. It's getting to the point where he's gonna say, hey, I like that background actor. Make, give him a show. So next upcoming <laughs> this year is the Flash, which is really just a Batverse movie. No, no, no. I, I, I actually, you know, the more I hear about this film, it sorry to sound like it really will still be a Flash movie ultimately where Batmans are supporting Batman. But yeah, we know about this. Ben Affleck set to appear in here. His final appearance. He's made pretty clear he wants it to be his final performance, I'll add. And Michael Keaton as well, who's set to return. We already know this. Let's move on. Yeah. Bad Girl. Now, not to be an HBO Max show, but an HBO Max movie, which will take place oh. in the more established, still pretty confusing DCEU timeline, whatever it's, it's going to be. We got to wait for The Flash, apparently, to understand what this movie's <laughs> going to really be, because Gordon will be there, who was introduced in Justice League. It's going to be Michael Keaton continuing on as Batman, and he seems to be really jazzed about it. I don't know if it's him or his publicist who's putting out photos of the Batsuit on social media. Probably his publicist. Don't really see Michael Keaton sitting around being like, which is the right photo? On the <laughs> you know? and there's rumors of Robin appearing in here as well. And, and Batgirl, of course. Batgirl. Barbara Gore finally getting around thing. But speaking of Justice League and confusing timelines, I do believe in the powers of the multiverse. Oh God, Greg, you need a plosion filter for fuck's sake. Buy one of these, Greg, please buy one of these to kill me with the, but just buy one. 
Just one. Get this one. Just get yeah, that one right there. Yeah. I'll send you an Amazon <laughs> what's it called? Associate affiliate, affiliate link. link. <laughs> So this is being really demanded. And after we got Zack Snyder's Justice League, a film that many, many, many thought would never see the light of day. And this is a much bigger prospect to handle. Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3. I don't really want to touch on like the Ben Affleck side of things. Do I believe that there's a possibility he could come back if they ended up getting this off the ground? Sure. Uh, but let's just focus on the fact that Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3 could continue. As many of mm. you have probably already heard by now, there's that Warner Media Discovery merger happening and where Discovery CEO David Zaslav, he's going to be taking over the organization. There are insiders that reveal that people like Warner Brothers Chairman and Sarnoff, DC Films President Walter Hamada, Warner Brothers Pictures Group Toby Emmerich are not expected to remain three people who are easily Zack Snyder's closest friends. And apparently there's another insider that leaked this, and of course it's a leak, so take it with a grain of salt, that Zaslav is focused on producing more content that audiences seek, especially Warner Media's most popular IPs. And reportedly, in the year of 20. 2021 when so many movies had the option to be streamed and a lot of movies that should have just been the theaters went to streaming. Zack Snyder's Justice League, I believe, was in the top three of most stream movies of 2021. So this can present a good opportunity. Hell yeah, multiverse it off. Let's get Zack Snyder's Justice League two and three. I love the Batman. I'm very curious about the Flash. Also still really want Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3. Another one that has not been wiped off the table here. One that I really wanted, Nightwing. The person I believe wrote and is attached to direct this movie is Chris McKay from the Lego Batman movie. And he said huh. in mid 2021, so this is fairly recent when he talked about it, is that it's a movie that I still really want to do. I love the character of Dick Grayson as a young adult becoming his own kind of superhero character. That was gonna be a father and son story and also a revenge movie. Sounds very much like the Lego Batman movie, which I was really excited about because there's a lot going on in that script. It's going to be really primal and pared down like a real red meat movie in the best way. I'm Batman. <laughs> well, that movie has such a fun movie. But there was a period in my life when I was really young when I read a lot of comics and that actually came from getting introduced into Nightwing. So Nightwing is the character I've wanted to see most brought to the big screen. I don't watch Titans, so I think he's in there if i'm not mistaken but to see him in live action form there's so many actors who could play dick grayson and at that stage in his life it's a really interesting character so maybe with batgirl we could get the introduction of robin and whoever's cast as robin could be spinned off into nightwing one of the first comics i think i ever actually read was the hunt for oracle and that's like the beginnings of when dick grayson moonlights as a cop and he moonlights as a vigilante. I, what's he moonlighting as? It takes place in Bloodhaven as the villain Blockbuster. Of course, Barbara Gordon's Oracle, although it would be a very confusing timeline because, you know, like she has to be Batgirl for a while before she can be Oracle, who is like paralyzed and shit. So um, just do its own Nightwing movie. Make the Chris McKay one. All right, who didn't see this one coming? The movie that made a billion dollars, won some Oscars, Joker 2. Now, not much is known about this movie. It's been reported that the first draft has at least been submitted. They got the first draft, say! <laughs> I just laugh way too hard at my own dumb jokes. There's rumors about Lady Gaga being courted for this. We did our own video where we were sort of pitching like what we think the plot of this film could be. I recommend you guys go check that out. I actually really love that video. Joker 2, it's coming. Don't be surprised. Why would you be surprised? All right, and then speaking of Nightwing from earlier, this one, I really want this one. I really do. I'm gonna preface it with this. It doesn't seem likely at the moment, but you never know. Crazier shit has happened. The Lego Batman movie too. Mm -hmm. So the reason why this might not happen is because why? while the Lego Batman movie is beloved, like a lot of Batman fans usually consider that like one of the top five best Batman movies. It's beloved, made a good amount of money, but the Lego movie too did not do that well. Lego Ninjago movie didn't do that well. And I believe the rights have been bought or reverted something that either way, they used to be with Warner Brothers who obviously does the DC shit. And now the rights of the Lego movie franchise are over at Universal. And I don't think you Universal's really interested in doing this and no reports are indicating that they would be interested in doing mm. this. They probably just want to do their own thing. Make Lego Fast and Furious or some shit. Which actually <laughs> wouldn't be a bad idea. They'll make a Lego <laughs> horror film extended universe or whatever. Oh, the Cinematic MonsterVerse. Universe, the MonsterVerse, yeah. yeah. They'll do a Lego MonsterVerse movie. I think that would actually perform well. Yeah. You know? Better than the live action, I'm sure. Better than the mummy live action, yeah. yeah. And you can have Tom Cruise voice 
anybody. Any, yeah, anybody, <laughs> everybody. Yeah. Chris McKay had this to say recently. Dan Harmon from Rick and Morty and Michael Waldron of Rick and Morty and also Loki and Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness had done a first draft of the script that was really great. It was truly epic, both from an action standpoint and from a story standpoint. The structure was Godfather Part 2. Wow. He kisses Robin on the cheek and says, I knew it was you, Dick. A story about <sighs> Batman's... He kissed him on the lips, actually. In the movie, The Godfather 2, he kissed him on the lips. Oh, okay. Yeah, Fr Fredo. Fredo. Yeah, he kissed him on the lips. He goes, I know, it was, I knew it was you, Fredo. And then Fredo ran off. And says, I knew it was you, dick. A story about Batman's relationship to the Justice League and Superman. Now as well as the formative moments of the Justice League and Batman's relationship with Superman then. Like, this just sounded like a truly heartfelt movie. You know, I think that's something that was really interesting about the first film was that it starts off just super funny. Like, it is hilarious and cool, but mainly hilarious. And then it just has such depth to it by the end. And I loved how when talking about this, he mainly spoke about wanting to explore the development of Batman as a character, his relationships, learning how to form connections, cutting between times. That just sounds awesome. And I feel like a lot of people really love this to happen. All right, another animated movie here that will have Batman DC League of Super Pets. Oh, I saw so the trailer, trailer just dropped. Out for yeah. this. Did not see it. Honestly, I, I actually haven't. I could just watch it on my own. I don't need to have a camera pointed at me for every trailer I watch. Anyway, the plot <laughs> of it is this. when the Justice League is captured by Lex Luthor, Superman's dog, Crypto, forms a team of shelter pets who were given superpowers. How named Ace, who becomes super strong and indestructible, a pig named PB, who can grow to giant size, a turtle named Merton, who becomes super fast, and a squirrel named Chip who gains electric powers. This and sounds Batman's really cute. Somewhere. Moving on. Batman Caped Crusader. You thought the Mad Reeve shit was done. Well, it kind of is, but it's kind of not because he's one of the producers of this. So Matt Reeves, J.J. Abrams, and Bruce Tim are revealed to be producing this series. J.J. Abrams, who uh, whose films are loved by everyone equally, described it as a thrilling cinematic <laughs> of Batman's <laughs> roots while diving deeper into the psychology of these iconic characters. I mean, to have Bruce Tim involved in this sounds amazing. And I think J.J. Abrams, there's a lot of his films I actually do really love. I think he's a better yeah. producer generally than he is a director. To have him involved on the creative side, and that department I think is awesome and of course with Matt Reeves this honestly sounds like this could shape up to be like an amazing ass animated series like this really does sound like this could be something super special and it's going to be released on HBO Max and Cartoon Network all right people the last one I got today check this out if you thought Cars that franchise was cool well have you heard of Bat Wheels. Bat Wheels what? is an upcoming American animated superhero preschool series. Wow. Crime fighting vehicles alongside DC superheroes will be on Cartoon Network and HBO Max. Wow. So in this show, the Bat Wheels are reported to be sentient, super powered crime fighting vehicles that fight alongside this is our real. heroes Batman, Robin, Batgirl, and a host of DC superheroes. Oh. They're going to have been created by the Bat Computer, and the heroes are essentially going to be like kids with little to no life experience. It's going to be like cars, but with like Batman. <laughs> and guess who's voicing Batman? This one actually genuinely who? surprised who? the shit out of me. <laughs> it was Batman's going to be voiced by Ethan Hawke. Oh! Moon Knight. Oh, oh, oh shit. Now, Batman's. He's dominating the comic sphere, man. For those of you that don't know, I am a huge Ethan Hawke fan. I'm a huge Ethan Hawke supporter, I should say. I'm always happy whenever I see him. Yes. Like, Anytime I see him, I'm like, yes, Morthian Hawk. I feel like he's one of the most underrated actors in Hollywood. And it's, I'm glad he's finally getting like more and more recognition. Got to pay them bills. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, was there one here that I missed? I know we didn't talk about any upcoming DC animated movies that are like based on like a comic run or something or the video games. But what I leave off the list, which one here are you most excited for? Thanks for joining me on this journey. I'll catch y'all soon. Wow. That was thorough. That was thorough. I'm, I'm just like, the whole bat wheel thing, I mean, Super Pets or whatever it was, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's kind of cute. It's like a cute little animation for little kitty winkles. Get some cute pets doing some cool things. I can get on board with that. And then the bat wheels, I'm like, Wow, Warner Brothers are really trying to milk the crap out of Batman. Like we're gonna get them started on it young, you know, preschool I mean, age, and to then. To be fair, the Batman thing has been milked for decades at this point. Oh yeah, that's true. I mean, but at the same wheels, time, Bat Wheels, Bat Wheels. I get it, but at the you know concurrently with the Batman films, if I'm not mistaken, like you know the Batman cartoon was happening at the same time in the '90s. Yeah, I remember the Batman cartoon. I mean, I remember growing up and watching like 
was it the Adam West one? Yeah. It, it was in color. Yeah. Adam West, yes. Yeah. That's before the time I'm even referring to. What I'm saying is that in the, since the 90s, we've been getting this overlap of live action and cartoon for a while now. There have been multiple iterations. And then in addition to that, you've got the video games. And so at sure. all fronts, they have been. And then in addition to that, you got the Six Flags Magic Mountain uh, theme Batman ride. And so, oh, is that the one where you stand up? No, you hang. The Riddler's where you stand up. I got caught in the balls once with that thing. <laughs> You gotta be careful with the Riddler one, because you sort of like sit into it a little bit. You're not really standing, you sort of sit a little bit. And then when the ride ends, you stand up, the safety thing goes, oh, I want to meet you there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, right in the nets. But the thing I'm most excited for, he mentioned early on in this, which is the Penguin spinoff. Like, yeah. that's the one that's got me the most juiced. I'm, I'm very, very excited about that because I thought Colin Farrell did a, an amazing job in the movie. Yeah. I mean, I've always thought he was a really, really good actor. The only time that I didn't find him remarkable was in Dumbo. And that's just because, like, he wasn't the point. Like, the, yeah. anything else I've watched him in for, since Minority Report, like, I've always thought he was really good. She completely disappeared into this role. I I hope he gets an Oscar and a Grammy. Or not a Grammy, what am I talking Grammy? about? Emmy. I don't know anything about TV and music, so <laughs> I hope he gets a Golden a, Globe. A go an Emmy? Or an Emmy is for TV shows. The Penguin spin-off series. Oh, I thought you meant for the Batman. I'm saying an Oscar for the movie. Uh-huh. Preemptively an Emmy because you think he's gonna be so good. And then an Emmy after the show is amazing. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, okay because he's sustaining this role like I know he did really disappear into the role like yeah. if you hadn't said oh that's Colin Farrell playing the penguin yeah. like I wouldn't have known that might be one of my favorite roles what I want to know right? is how the hell he got cast for that how does how does that happen like how does it happen where you have him and they go you know who would really be really good as the penguin Colin Farrell. Like, how does that even come up in a conversation? Maybe, maybe Matt Reeves, like, already, I don't know if they knew each other beforehand or if he's just a fan of Colin Farrell's work because, you know, like, that video we watched from New Rockstars, Matt Reeves saw Robert Pattinson in the movie Good Time and then was like, oh, yeah, I really like him. I think yeah. he would do well in this role. Like, maybe he saw something in Colin Farrell or he knew Colin Farrell personally and was like, yeah, I just want to I want to cast my friends yeah. or just people that I what really admire. What if they admire. were passing a joint back and forth and you know, you know what would be really funny? <laughs> if we cast you as a penguin. Or maybe <laughs> like, it was like a bet and he's like, I bet you. How the hell did that happen? That's just nuts <laughs> to me. It's crazy because you wouldn't think it. Danny DeVito seemed like a pretty obvious casting choice for the penguin, right? Like, because he kind of has that stature. Cause it works. You're like, yeah, yeah, that's not a stretch. You go Colin Farrell. You're like, really? Obviously, they had to put on a lot of prosthetics and, and make him heavier and, and all that to give him the right vibe. But he's owning it. I'm surprised we haven't had a whole, like, recall Colin Farrell kind of thing, like pro protesting against him for being in this movie and being yeah. that guy. Because oh, we got fat actors in Hollywood already. Why are you taking our roles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stop taking I, our roles. I, I'm surprised that hasn't that conversation hasn't come up at all. Yeah, you should you should hire a real overweight person. Yeah, who actually looks like that. Sure, I, I'd rather he work. did great. Yeah, I mean Colin Farrell <laughs> was amazing. So, anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Subscribe to the Real Rejects. I really really enjoyed this video. I thought it was thorough and funny. That was very the, you know, entertaining. Very entertaining yes. all the way through, while you know divulging a lot of cool information yes. that I wasn't actually aware of. Buy a pop filter be affiliate it's, links in the description it won't Whoa. hurt my ears so much yeah <laughs> thanks for hanging out y'all i'm Love jabby you, this is achara kirk peace out